Good morning, uh, Dr. Swaminathan and uh, Dr. Kasimiro. Chairs, other dignitaries on the dais, um, researchers, civil society, affected community colleagues, and I see Dr. Uh, Luchika Ditu, Executive Director of Stop TB Partnership. Thank you very much for being here, and a big thank you to Eris and uh, the working group on new TB vaccines for always being open to civil society inputs and um, willing to have a dialogue and new ideas on community engagement. I'm here representing the global civil society and the affected community. I didn't actually start off as a vaccine advocate. It's only the realization that we will never treat TB away and that without a vaccine, perhaps the dream of ending TB will never be realized, got me into seriously advocating for a vaccine, an effective vaccine. The TB world has seen a lot of momentum and progress lately. We have new drugs, new diagnostic tools, a political commitment like never before, and our very first UN high-level meeting on TB. Most countries have committed to ending TB by 2030, and the more ambitious ones by 2025. However, a recent KPMG report using WHO figures states that at the current rate of progress, the SDG's target of eliminating TB by 2030 will be missed by 150 years, and that an additional 28 million people will die within 15 years. Tuberculosis, as we all know, has cost the world economy $600 billion in the past 15 years, from 2000 to 2015. And it will rise to dollars one trillion by 2030. And Asia Pacific and Africa will bear the biggest burden of this loss. All these figures of scare and doom have not made any serious dent in funding for TB research. I say this because the Stop TB Partnership Global Plan to end TB 2016-2020 calls for a nine billion US dollars over five years. That's approximately two billion annually. But in 2016, only 8% of that was available for TB research. The global, TB report, the global Report on TB Vaccines 2018 states that a 1.25 billion investment is all that is needed to fund and fund the development of the most efficient and most effective strategy to combat the spread of TB, a vaccine. I must apologize that I'm talking money right at the start. Usually, people keep the asks for the end. But I believe in talking about the elephant in the room first and get it off the table. Investments in TB vaccine research require long-term sustained commitment. The payoffs can be huge, and the costs of inaction are many magnitudes greater than what it will cost to develop a new vaccine. $1.25 billion as against a loss of one trillion, which is bigger. A recent welcome move is the BRICS TB Research Network. The network will diversify support for TB R&D, which is currently over-dependent on the commendable investments of the US government and the Gates Foundation. The TB research network of the BRICS must be fully funded. I would call on countries to commit to increase funding in line with our targets before the UN high-level meeting. 
Along with this, the ICMR, India TB Research Consortium, to address gaps in TB R&D is also a welcome move. And as the funding flows for vaccine research, the call from community members is for the core principles of affordability, equity, ethics, and access are not forgotten, but kept at the forefront of all research. It would be a shame if we have a vaccine and then take a decade to negotiate a price that high burden countries can afford. Now that the elephant is spoken for, let us begin to put the focus on vaccines. And why, will, why we will spend time on vaccines, we also need to keep in mind that vaccines is one part of the problem. Our TB response today starts from the onset of cough. And that's quite late and not good enough. The spectrum needs to start from much before, from prevention. Prevention will be difficult to achieve unless we have an intensive involvement of community members. Today, both prevention and community engagement are still discussion points and haven't be become strategic or implementation points. We will all benefit politically and within the TB affected community if the larger TB prevention agenda included infection control, preventive therapy, and vaccines in a unified advocacy to ensure the benefits of prevention science research to all people at risk of TB. Across the world, in my work with TB survivors and affected community, we often hear, but I was given BCG, yet I got TB. Why didn't it work? One of our members from Mumbai, Nandita, a young woman, when she heard about this conference, she called me and she said, I had taken all my vaccinations, including BCG, yet I ended up getting TB. BCG does not work well after a point. The result? I had intestinal TB twice and ended up becoming deaf, affecting my speech abilities for no fault of mine. We need political commitment to find a specialized vaccine for TB urgently. We cannot continue with ineffective vaccines that render people with disabilities for life. And I'm sure all of us would agree with Nandita. And then there are others who continuously we hear them say, if only there was an effective vaccine, for adults, perhaps my husband, my mother, my brother would be alive today. As a civil society representative and advocate, I know everyone agrees that advocacy is essential and there have been calls for increased advocacy in TB. But when it comes to actual action, there have been very few attempts to meaningfully engage the affected community and civil society to build strong partnerships. Inclusion of representatives from the community in science, planning, monitoring, and governance is extremely important. Several groups, such as the Treatment Action Group or the Global Coalition of TB Activists, are willing to provide the necessary support to take this piece of the jigsaw forward. Two good practice examples of meaningful engagement are the Community Engagement Program of the ARIS and the Working Group on New Vaccines. The ARIS program brought together community advocates, built their capacity, and nurtured community advisory boards at TB vaccine clinical trial sites across Africa. The working group on new vaccines has for the past year established and implemented the vaccine advocates program, building the capacity of selected advocates from across the globe to understand research and development. These advocates are here today at the conference and will be respondents contributing to the sessions over the next few days. We had a very successful workshop yesterday with the advocates continuing the capacity building pr process. We had great presentations by the researchers. The agreement at the end of the day was that it is important and possible for researchers and advocates to work together. The group identified many opportunities for this in the coming months, starting with this global forum. 
The good participatory practice guidelines for TB vaccine research developed by ARIS has practical guidelines in place to help researchers and scientists envision, structure, and operationalize community engagement. This advocacy should not fall off the radar or lose the momentum for lack of investment. Funders of TB vaccine research should budget for the support needed for community engagement. TB Today has the attention like never before. There are high profile events on TB such as this that provide a pivotal platform for countries to take action, to work together, to pledge concrete financial investments in TB R&D, to develop an effective vaccine, to include the affected community and make the dream of TB free world a little closer to reality. Thank you very much.